given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Metaphysical. Paranormal. You know, all those things you've been wondering about. Are you ready to go deeper into the realms of the unknown? I hope you've got your walking shoes on. Because life is an adventure. And this is the journey. Come on, let's go. Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. This is the Journey Radio Show. And hey, we're the She Squatchers. I'm your host, Jen Cruz. I've got my trusty teammates. I've got Tammy Tricol. Hey, Tammy. Hi, everybody. And Jenna Grover. Jenna. Well, hello, hello, hello. I finally get to be with these guys. I missed you guys last time, so I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> We have an exciting show for you all tonight. We've got Bigfoot in Kansas returning because they had so many more stories that we didn't get to the last time we were on with them a couple weeks ago. So we've got Leo Fernandez and Jason Roberts returning to us from Kansas, Bigfoot in Kansas. And of course, they have a show also called Cryptid Heartland. All right, whoever put us in that better take us out right now. <laughs> I don't think I did, did I? <laughs> well, you know what, Jen? They can't see it online. They can't. Yes, they oh, can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I took us off. I don't know who put us on, but I took us off. <laughs> they can't see us on uh, on the radio, but somebody put us in the Brady Bunch mode on our screen. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> welcome back, you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having yep, us. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, I'm excited that you could come back. Um, you know, you sent me an audio clip, and I, I am really excited to hear the backstory to that audio clip. And I, I have sent it over to Sarge, our awesome producer. So he's got it where he can play it. But I want to hear the backstory behind this clip of the sounds that you recorded? Well, it was uh, six years ago. Uh, we were down in Oklahoma again, and we were actually filming for our uh, pilot that we were working on. And there was, what, five, six of us mm -hmm. out there. Um, we were actually, it was late at night. Um, we had just got done eating dinner. So we left our camp. And um, one of the guys with us left his recorder on the table where he was cooking food and everything. And we went off. Oh, how far away were we? Uh, we were probably about, I would say, 40 to 50 yards away. Over at the house that we were investigating and we were over there filming. So in the audio clip, you can actually hear us in the background talking and, you know, being our usual selves um, while we have a visitor in camp. Um, which, um, Brendan, who, uh, you know, really kickstarted Bigfoot in Kansas, he even puts on there, um, on the audio clip, uh, when he posted it online that you can hear with the wood knocks, you can hear the, um, footsteps walking toward, uh, the camp and everything. So, um, those are some of the things that you can kind of hear in the audio if you listen really closely to that. Yeah, this is a shorter clip, so it may not have the wood knock part, That's but true. you can hear what you need to hear, and then you hear the footsteps walking away, as well as us in the background quite a bit of ways. You can tell there's a great distance from sound to where, where this thing is. How far away were you guys? What were you doing? We were actually investigating at the time more of the paranormal in that given moment. Um, we were probably, like I said, about 40 to 50 yards away. So we're real faint in the background. You can barely even hear us. I and mean, you can kind of hear us chattering a little bit. But this thing is right on top of the recorder that's sitting on the table where we were just getting dinner ready. So it startled us when we heard it. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, Sarge, could you play that audio clip for us, please? So 
So that one's like abbreviated clip of it, like I said. And uh, when I first heard it, it sounded like somebody was, to me at first, somebody was snoring. But I'm like, wait a minute, nobody's here and it's not time to go to sleep yet. But then you hear that big huffy, like, like a growl. And it's just like, that doesn't sound like any one of us that's putting out that much force behind their, their, the sound they're making it. So, and we never saw this thing walk into camp. We never seen this thing walk out because, like I said, we were all the way. Yeah. But we we always have recorders and cameras going. Nothing on camera showed up, but the recorder luckily caught that for us. So and there was a camera recording that area. It's way far in the distance. Yeah, we had it pointed from probably God, I'd say probably a good hundred yards yeah. away, yeah. but nothing showed up. So it's enough to where, and it films in night vision, of course. So nothing showed up on camera as far as that we saw we were able to timestamp everything and kind of look and couldn't couldn't find anything yeah interesting but it continues it's the same location we talked about on two weeks ago on your show so we feel very confident in saying it's probably who we think it is <laughs> possibly a sasquatch sighting because we know there's the same kind of interaction with this uh these beings with uh you know the wood knocks the the pushing of the tents, the you know the heavy footfalls, well, and just two di- two nights later, you guys had a full on encounter. Yeah, we saw a saw sighting it. actually yeah, there, so. not too far from that same area. You guys saw? Yes. Yeah. It was uh, Leo, Brendan, and his and Leo's sister Renee yeah. were in the RV. Um, we were going over audio and video actually at the time, and there's a couple of dogs on the property that. Kind of protect us, yeah. and uh, for the most part, they were silent the whole time we were there, except for this given, not this moment with the recording, but when we had the sighting, these two dogs started growling and getting real aggressive that it caught our attention. So we look in the direction where they're kind of pacing, and that's where we can see this creature kind of crouch down in the, in the grass by a tree, just kind of like waving his fingers back and forth in the grass, kind of just feeling the grass upside down and i think on the show last week or two weeks ago we mentioned this this is where it was kind of raining a little bit where once we went out there and went to the location the grass was matted down you could see where the imprints where everything was but like i said it was a little too damp to do any kind of casting or anything like that so and it was pretty dark in that area so we had to wait to the very next day to do a comparison as far as size goes and uh our buddy brendan is he's about six five six six, six. yeah and he reenacted it for us in that same location and didn't do it justice. Like this creature was probably another good foot and a half taller than him, yeah. even crouched down. So we're thinking this thing was probably seven foot, eight foot, possibly. And it was, if I remember right, it was kind of a darker, like a reddish fur. And, uh, That's what you guys said. Yeah, but it was dark, so I couldn't see a good color scheme because it wasn't like there was no natural light because it was nighttime already at this point when we saw this being. And, uh, by the time we got out of the, the RV and ran towards it, it was probably maybe like maybe a 30, 40 yard run and it was gone in the woods. And we couldn't, where it went, we couldn't follow it because it was so dense and thick. But I mean, we, and we had no camera pointed at that direction at that given time other than just our own eyes. We saw it and did a size comparison the next day. But it was definitely something, I, you know, I wasn't expecting. Well, being there a couple times prior to that, I was expecting to see something like that, but never actually expecting to see it. Right. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was eye opening again. <laughs> Do you think that when you think it came into your camp and made those sounds on the audio, do you, maybe it was attracted to the smell of the food that you had just eaten there? Oh, probably. I would say that's <laughs> probably a good indication because it was the same table that we were sitting down had all the food laid out and everything and it it seems like this that whole trip we were there about three four days Mm -hmm. uh doing some filming and it just i just had that feeling we were being watched the entire time like it was just there watching us and was more curious about us this time around because we stayed multiple nights right so yeah, we camp out on some of us camp out on the ground, and yeah. uh, we I roughed have, it. He was in an RV. <laughs> we have we have a fire going, you know, all night and whatnot. Hey, and like I said, this is the first time an RV was offered to us. I'm like, <laughs> let's see, do you want to sleep on the hard ground in the cold, or I want to stay inside a you know comfy bed? You don't have an air mattress? Uh, not normally. I don't. Usually, I sleep on the ground in my tent. 
He's not a one-man tent. Person. I'm not. I'm a city folk, <laughs> like I said before. And uh, <laughs> I need running well, water, cable, you know, phone, internet. <laughs> no, I mean, that's nice. And I believe they call that glamping, sir. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Does anybody want to offer us an RV? <laughs> oh, we got lucky. It was actually one of our teammates had a friend who rents or who actually owns an RV dealership in he knew what we did. He's like, you guys can rent one or take one for a few days as long as you, you know, don't damage it and bring it back fully gassed. We're like, for free? Of course. Yeah, we'll take it. And what did he do when he first got there? Got it stuck in mud. <laughs> I didn't get it stuck. Our buddy Roth, who's the one who drove it, he got it stuck in mud. <laughs> so... What do you guys take out? I, I watched the first, your first show. Like I said, I was really disappointed mm-hmm. that I didn't get to be there with you, but... um. When you guys are going out, what are you bringing? What are you bringing and why are you bringing it? Uh, most of the time, it is just all of our gear that we use for paranormal, act, you know, for ghost hunting. That's what started it all. I mean, that's all we have. Um, since then, uh, we've gotten, and I'm not a technical person. I am, like, <laughs> not tech savvy whatsoever. But um, we got the, what do you call it, the uh, amplifies the... Like, the sound amplifier the thank code. you thank you oh yeah yeah okay got that. Yeah. Uh, we, ha- we use that we we actually even try using some of the paranormal equipment that we have just to see if we can get any reaction to anything out there you know um, especially like geophone like uh, you know vibrations or anything right or stuff like that. but yeah I don't have know. you just... have you gotten anything out there uh, here, here in Kansas, yes, we have. We've actually, uh, Brandon and I actually, in Southwest Kansas, uh, we went out on a day hike just to like do some scouting in some areas where there have been some known sightings. Um, at the time, we were looking at the, you know, um, like the BFRO site. So we went to some of those areas, and we went. We skipped the area that had the sightings, and we went off into kind of a preserve wildlife preserve area mm-hmm. and we were hiking around and it didn't take long where we looked down and we were going south on a dirt road in this area and going across it um going to the east was one gigantic footprint and we were just shocked it, it was about i think seven in the morning that we were out there and there it was it was just in the dirt but you could see the toes and the heel and all that yeah and it just looked one step and gone we were shocked by it. We didn't have anything because we didn't think we were actually going to find anything. So we did, of course, no casting, no nothing <laughs> like that. But you did get a picture of it, though. I well, Yeah, and I sent yeah. it to Jen, too. Okay. I did. Yeah, and it was, uh, once again, our buddy Brendan, who yeah. does, who started Bigfoot in Kansas, he put his foot next to it, and he wears like a 12 or 13, yeah. if not bigger, <laughs> and it dwarfs his foot. Yeah. So, Or his foot dwar- gets dwarfed by this print, and it's pretty, you can see everything that... The, you know the the toes and everything and the I can't remember what they call that the right. the break yeah. in the uh, from the heel to the pad there you go yeah you can see everything like that in there and it's pretty evident what it is yeah. so so I'm always interested when people find just one footprint I know. can you could you see the reason why it might only be one footprint was it like harder ground or different type of ground. It- just a small little dirt road, like a little trail almost. Um, but beyond that, in the grass, it was very, like, very thick and hard grass that wasn't really capable of leaving a print or anything. And he was just thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, what if the stride must be just that large where it just took one step and went right over it? Well, then we went um, a little further north into... Um, where there's a free city fishing lake right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and no one's around. It's kind of in the middle of the woods. It's not really in the city at all. And we went off to where we ha- where we read there there had been reports by the BFRO uh, down by the river. And uh, so we went hiking around there. Then there's a little stream that came off of that and broke off. And right as we were walking along that is when we started seeing actual footprints going up coming out of the bankment going up onto the road and you could follow it and then it went right back down and disappeared and brendan 
like you said, he's six five, six six, and he his stride couldn't even match it. And I had my dad there with us, so you know he's looking at it, going, "Holy crap!" <laughs> Don't I, did, I know I didn't say it, but no, Don't say it, Jenna. It's like, <laughs> but no, he, we were all shocked that we were actually <laughs> seeing this. Yeah, and. But the dirt was so fine, there was no way to, like, cast it in that. Because, you know, he, Brendan had researched everything about what to do. I mean, he's a follower of Je- uh, Dr. Meldrum and all that, so he's just a big follower of him. Mm-hmm. Um, has been studying Sasquatch for ages. Um, so he was well prepared. I'm just the enthusiast who, you know, is not afraid to, like, just run out there and do it. And I was just shocked at what we were seeing. Yeah, it's it's fun to find footprints, and then when you do, you're like, okay, now what? <laughs> the first time, the first time we found prints that were castable, was in a gravel pit, mm. and it, you know, it, we tried to cast those. We did cast those, but they didn't turn out. They didn't turn out at all. Yeah. Yep. So, um, but we since then we got some pointers from other bigfooters on maybe next time if we find a print that we want to cast in something like that where you're supposed to spray it with like a really heavy duty hairspray let it set up and then put in some saran wrap yep and then with the casting material so it doesn't pick up all the gravel and the sand which is exactly what happened yeah Well, and some of the casts we've made over the years, they same thing. Some of the, you know, it wasn't very good and they're brittle and they fall apart. So it's kind of hard yeah. to, you know, preserve those if you don't know all the way how to do it properly. So you got to be, make sure you, like you said, take some pointers from others and, you know, they'll get better over time. Dental well, stone. Unfortunately, at the time, though, Jen knew someone who would have been able to give us much guidance on mm-hmm. those. And unfortunately, nobody uh, really wanted to call this person. So we could have. I just wanted to mention that, Jen, because we never but, really mentioned that. No, because I was working on a contract up on the reservation. So we were up there. I was working during the day. And then we were going out looking and after I'd get off of work on the contract. So I brought... I brought Jenna along with me and she was just hanging out at the hotel while I was working. And then we'd go out in the evening and, and, uh, we found footprints. And so when we found footprints, other people came to help for, they were going to cast them the next day, but I had to be at work and I'm like, don't wait for me. Call this guy. Here's his number. Call him. I bet you he'll come and help. Nobody called him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Fortunately, if you don't call them, can't do it. So <laughs> yeah, it, it really wasn't an unfortunate um, mm. situation to be in. And I was there, and maybe I should have said, "You guys, seriously, let's just do this." But you know what? When you're there and you're just, <clears throat> it's new to you. You learn quick. Yeah, you yeah. really do. Yeah. Speaking of, do you guys bring any kind of like whistles or any kind of alarms or bear spray or anything when you go out as far as protection for your body? um i always have mace in my vest that i i carry around because i never know what in the world we're going to run into right um like when we went to oklahoma i never expected sasquatch or anything like that i expected like bears or cats or something like that right not that you know a little bottle mace (laughs) was going to do anything it'll help um i always do carry a machete when i go out there too i keep it attached to my backpack you know so yeah with all my gear and my machete and everything, you know, I look like a SWAT guy that's going in to, like, do stuff. Yeah. So. Well, and, like, the we always carry tick spray because, you know, we don't want those those buggers on us, you know, because <laughs> this guy is a tick magnet. So not, yeah. not a chick magnet, a tick magnet. Yeah. And uh, he always finds one every time we go back to Oklahoma. He always, they always find him, and I'm like... They must not like me because I never had one that I, I know of. I just look at a bush and all of a sudden <laughs> it's on me. So. You know why? You know why? It's because you're sweet. There you go. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm rotten to the core. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, you are. Well, you are. Yeah, you know. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, like you said, it's just, he talks about the machete. I brought one that same trip the very last time we had the sighting. And at that time, I never brought it out once. Except for that moment. That's the only time I brought it out. And that was the very last night we were actually down there. Just because at the time I didn't know exactly what we were looking at. And 
I don't remember if you remember on the last, I think we told on the last show where we had the incident with the camera getting cut. That was the previous time we were down there. And so I didn't know if somebody was, a person was actually there at the time until we saw the, you know, the reddish brown fur and then how big it was. And it's like, well, no, that's not a person. That's something else. So in the moment, I grabbed the machete right away and came out of the, the camper and we went looking for this thing. But well, not that I, I would have harmed, harmed it, but anything. I don't think I told you, but I had my shotgun too. Yeah. Well, too, so. <laughs> I think we, some of us came with extra things with that time around because of the incident with the camera and, uh, Plus, it was getting warmer, and we know there's some bears out there. We know there's some – in this part of the uh, Arkans- or Arkansas, wow, Oklahoma, there's also uh, some wild cats out – or uh, mountain lions, there you go, sorry, and some wild boars out there too. So you never know what you're going to encounter out there. So we come just a little bit more prepared as it gets warmer. I have a question, though. What's everybody's thoughts on the bounty oh, on God. Sasquatch's head? The one I think it isn't it. Oklahoma, it's in Oklahoma, Oklahoma isn't it? Yeah, Senator they just recently did back. that. They have no idea what they're getting into. Oklahoma does not know how. I really think this. They have no money. How they're going to get so many people in there? They may make a lot of money, but they're mm. not looking at what's going to happen after. And to to think that that many people are going to want to kill something that hasn't even been proven to be human. Well, right. Uh, yeah. I, I, mm. I I know that, and the thing that they're not allowed to hurt it. That they don't get to get the bounty money if they hurt it at all. They only can trap it without hurting it. But, I mean, I think there's going to be some idiots out there in Bigfoot costumes. God. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And, uh, you know, and it might just be somebody who has a, a podcast who's trying to get out there and get some footage of, you know, of himself in the woods or whatever. And somebody is going to be like, hey, and they're, yeah. you know, I think somebody's probably going to get hurt. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And the thing is, nobody will have it on camera because how many people, how many times we've been out there in the field and we're just like Jenna said, we're just astonished what we're seeing that, hey, take a picture, do something, you know, sometimes you're just. You're shocked at what you're seeing in the moment. You don't have a like that night. We didn't take a picture of that night. We're just like, what is going on out there? First, we were on defensive with the dogs going crazy. And then it's just like nobody pulled out a camera. It never right? fails. Yeah. <laughs> Which we found out at the at the Casey Paracon, we were doing our talk. And I don't remember who dressed up in the big footing costume. Oh, and the Yeti. Yeah, the Yeti costume. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. They came out, and we had just told our audience, because people asked the question, do you have evidence of some of the stuff? Like, we have what we can do in the moment. Um, we were talking about the same thing, about having a camera ready at all times, basically taking pictures, you know, if you have an encounter. Well, the Yeti came out from the side door, and it's, we didn't know it. We didn't plan it. But our buddy wrote the one that got the RV stuck in the trailer, said to everybody in the crowd, See what we're talking about? This is exactly what we're saying. That big, that Yeti came out in costume. Not one of you guys pulled your phone out from the crowd and took a picture of it. <laughs> so they can relate. It's like, see how easy it is to not do what you think is so easy not to do? Ready. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's a great, great example. Another one would be having someone, and this would really shock them, have someone completely naked run by real fast and ask them to still find a picture because they may think this guy's in a suit. But if they see a naked person, they're going to go click as fast as they can. You right. know, and then we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if the event organizers oh, would approve of that. Not necessarily at the event. <laughs> Who's the volunteer? Not me. <laughs> I bet would have. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I'm thinking not necessarily at a place like that. But... Or yeah. did you guys want to do it? I mean, it's completely open if you guys <laughs> I mean, maybe a couple more green beers we'll, we can talk. We'll, we'll negotiate oh, here. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. I've seen those Halloween <laughs> costumes where people wear these costumes that are they're dressed up as old people but naked oh my god <laughs> that would work oh my gosh <laughs> mm, i don't know about that either <laughs> we'll see <laughs> oh, oh gosh too funny That'd be funny <laughs> yeah, like we said it's so easy to like i said what we thought we could have would have done in the moment but in actuality i think everybody's just astonished or you know dumbfounded what they're seeing and it's just it's easy to forget what you have at your hand every well, time yeah i mean 
to go on the, that line the same day that Brendan and I uh, found that one gigantic print in the dirt. Um, we went further on into the area mm-hmm. and we get to this really wooded spot and all of nature just stopped. I mean, we didn't hear the birds just went away. All sound went away. And next thing we started hearing was these little like rock clicks and it was happening all around us. And he just kept looking at me and pointing and saying, you know, be quiet, be quiet. Did I even get my phone out or a recorder out to do anything with that? Nope, I didn't. <laughs> I I just stood there like in an amazement and just enjoying the moment. And afterwards, I'm like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I didn't do anything to record that. And it was amazing to hear the sounds. It's like they were just communicating around us and... You know, we couldn't figure out where the sound was coming from. Well, the experience itself is so amazing. It's almost like you don't want to ruin the experience by grabbing a phone or an audio and stumbling to find it. You just want to, you know, soak it in. Is that how you It enters enters my mind sometimes to to grab something, you know, like when I was at my mom's house in the Ozarks and I was outside playing cornhole and I heard, you know, a juvenile Bigfoot and I was like, what is that? And I asked my brother, he's like, I've never heard that before. I'm like, they know I'm here. <laughs> but I never so thought funny. to grab a phone or anything to record it. I was just amazed. I was like, wow, we need to come here and investigate. Right. Yeah, and that's why when I'm on the investigation, I have my recorder. From the minute I step out of my vehicle, I turn it on to the minute I leave for that reason. Because some of the best evidence I've caught, not necessarily Bigfooting-wise, but paranormal has been during our initial tour with the client. I've caught things talking and left and right, you know, and whatnot. And uh, I'm glad I have my recorder going, so... Yeah. So your your pack is and all your equipment is ready to go as soon as you walk out of the vehicle. Uh, okay, Jen. Okay, Jen. Still recorder, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> but what about the flare that I was trying to get people to turn <laughs> off? Uh oh. Okay. In my defense, who, are I you know talking to me? You were talking to Jenna because that's her thing. Okay, and, let me just start up. Wait, 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 wait. I don't even know how to make the flare recorder. I have though. purchased <laughs> many, many, many things for this team. Mm-hmm. It is not my responsibility to teach the butterfly, but for them to look and learn. Oh, what you just started. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, was I, was open. <laughs> <laughs> I was more referring to all the times that I'm like, okay, we're going to get out of the car and we're going to go this way and then we're going to find this. And mm-hmm. people, people, name Jenna. We're going to find this. We're going to go this way and then we're going to find this. And people, people, name Jenna. We're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay, I will also tell you, there was another person in the vehicle who was not feeling very good, and I was trying to give her movies off of my Netflix on my phones, and so she didn't feel bad. She was sitting there. She was sick. Anyway, I'm, I'm a saying, kind I'm seeing and something saying, moving. Get out of here! <laughs> but I think there's something out here. There's something moving. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. I'm like, shut up. Let's go. <laughs> okay. so she really she really was just kind of being a rotten little stinker and um but when we finally got out there it was just amazing i mean hello <laughs> it was amazing and by the way jen yes she is right you have to be ready to go there was a great learning experience and thank you darling for teaching it to me <laughs> i have to ask though what when you're carrying your gear do you have are you carrying a backpack are you carrying a fanny pack Ooh. what kind of pack? <laughs> what it's kind pink of- i'll wear the fanny pack. pack no i'm kidding uh the, like jason said he has a tactical vest on where he has pockets full of different things you know flashlights to recorders to gadgets to whatever he may need um i try to bring my backpack for that reason because usually i have two or three cameras going in my hand with a different, you know, light spectrums and whatever else. And then I also have my recorder and then I have, I usually don't carry a flashlight because I just like, I like the challenge in I mean, the dark. <laughs> you've got all your hard cases too. Yeah. Like lined up too. So, so I'm, I try to get everything ready. I mean, everything's charged, re- rearing to go. That way in the moment, like you said, we can jump out and maybe start, you know, head first, basically dive head first into the deep end. So. See, I want to try the uh, SLS out in the woods and try to map out That'd be interesting. Something. Yeah. That's, That's one thing we haven't tried yet, is that yet. Yeah, but haven't tried how, that. How far will the little dots extend? That's just it. They don't go very far. Yeah, um, we we did it. We, we had an ca- actual paranormal case Friday night, and we were in a big, giant conference room, and yeah. it's but the it, depth wasn't very – I mean, the mapping was pretty decent. It was just the dark 
because you see there's a couple of screens, you know, it's where one's infrared, the other one's the actual mapping in different colors. The infrared wasn't very, it, it wasn't very defined, well defined because it was so big of a room, but you could see the mapping happen. We have three of them. We should just yeah. try to like put them out there yeah. and just sit them in Actually, place. Actually, four. Uh, four, yes, yeah, we four. Have, we have four of those, yeah. We should do that. Yeah, we need to start right. doing that. So. I'm gonna, as I sit here with my uh, equipment MV, we're going to go to our commercial break. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. Four SLS cameras. My uh, yeah, goodness. I was just going to mention. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we got a little jelly there for a minute. <laughs> she bought two of them overseas at a good price. Yeah. I mean, how much? They came from I'm, Australia. Uh, how much? You got to pay, was it 300 It was, was 600 altogether. Yeah, two for, for, for 600 four? For For two. Oh, for two, it's, there was 600 yeah. So there's And there were the bigger screens, too. So we he up, upgraded since they bought two. They gave him the bigger, like, 10-inch yeah. tablet. Oh, so. that would be nice. I bet yeah. it's much easier. You can see a lot more. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. And I run one off a laptop, actually, too. I just hooked it up to my laptop and ran the software off of there. So you can do that also. Nice. Yep. So we I've have... played with an SLS camera one time when they first came out. I was out uh, doing a paranormal um, investigation down in southern Minnesota at an old asylum. And uh, Kevin Swanson came out and he had just got it. It was he got he participated in the GoFundMe Kickstart program for that. So he got one of the first ones out. Nice. Okay. That was fun. Yeah, they are pretty cool. They are. When they work, so, especially. Yeah. I'm hoping, this is what you're talking about, right? Uh, you disappeared. I don't want to see yes. where you at. Yeah. Oh, yeah, on the screen. Yeah, yep, yep. Absolutely. that's exactly what it is, yep. Okay. So, like I said, I've designed one with just my laptop and the Connect. So, it's a little bit more, yeah, I heard that, more easy to use, basically. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys, I, I'm going to say you have to dance at the end of the show. I mean, you didn't do it in the beginning like we saw. We talked about that. <laughs> I was green screen. You couldn't see me. That's why. Oh. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Hey, it's the Journey Radio Show, and we're the She Squatchers. Why don't you check us out online at SheSquatchers.com and click on our events page. You'll see all of the little events that we're going to be at soon. I need, still need to update that page. We've got something coming up next month in April. We'll be at the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference. Come out and see us. I'm excited. It's been way too long. It's an outdoor event, so it's going to be lots of safety goodness out there. So come on out. We've got uh, Dr. Igor Burtsev is coming over from Moscow, Russia. Yes. And it's it's going to be kind of exciting. Ken Gerhardt is going to be there. Scott Barda, the She Squatchers, and Ken Collins will be there as well. So come check it out and then check out the Bigfoot Museum there in Hastings as well. So, uh, hey, we are also on Facebook and Instagram at She Squatchers Official. But won't you please, please, please go out of your way to go to YouTube and find our, our channel and subscribe uh, so that we have more followers and win our competition because our competition is catching up <laughs> and we must win. And I don't think we're going to see this person until maybe October. So we've got some months going on here that we need to, uh, we need to get more subscribers and stomp out the competition that of the one who dared challenge us <laughs> to this race. <laughs> so go, go check us he dared. <laughs> he really did. We didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so he challenged us very publicly to, to a race of subscribers on YouTube. So please go to YouTube, find our channel at She Squatchers Official, and, and click subscribe. Thank you very much. And we're back to the show. We've got the guys from Bigfoot in Kansas. We've got Jason and Leo. Uh, and, and they were just telling us about all the amazing equipment that they have that we don't have. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if you had it, you would forget to, you know, grab it in the moment. Right, Jenna? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have said that had she not said anything. You know, I was just joking. I'm so all sorry. All in fun, honey. <laughs> it is. I, all good to go. We're I'm not here. We're not, we're not like that. I know. Yeah. Neither are we. Yeah. But... Expect a text later. Will you? Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm teasing. We're all good for easy. That's easy right. fun. Yes. 
we use fanny packs. Well, Jenna and I use fanny packs. Tammy won't. But I went and got myself this cute hot pink backpack and it was filled with all my cool stuff. And I'd have to take it off and open it up and dig through it. Jenna had this big, and I'm talking a big, thick fanny pack, and it was wide and thick and held all kinds of stuff. And she would just zip, take out, zip. (laughs) I was like, look how quick that is. You didn't have to take anything off. Just unzip and grab. I want one of those. So guess what? I'm wearing a fanny pack. I'm bringing them back. Nice. Uh, Yes. Yes, we have to bring those fanny packs back, especially for those big. Hey, you don't have to wear one, my dear. We'll have you sport something else fabulous. Tammy, no, Tammy has been resisting, and and you know I'm just gonna say, resistance is futile, Mike. <laughs> you can always put the backpack on backwards, and then it's right there in front. <laughs> I think I'll get myself a tactile vest. That sounds pretty cool. Maybe yeah. I can get it in hot pink. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is something we can discuss later. That actually does uh-huh. sound fun. <laughs> merch. See, We're going to have merch. I say, what you got to do is put the She Squatchers logo on that fanny pack so she has to wear it. Yeah, Free I, fucking advertisement of Billboard. You, me? I <laughs> you guys, I mentioned fanny packs, what was it, two years ago? And even Jen at first was like, Mm-mm, you know, and I was like, come on, they're amazing. You can go anywhere. And yeah, and finally, when she saw me, just a zippy here and a zippy here and pull out. Yeah, I knew she wanted one. Oh, yeah. I got her a big one like mine, so she fit in quite the the supplies. Nice. <laughs> I'd probably tip over if I wore my backpack in the front. I'm already top heavy in the front. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> I fall down already. We don't need to make me. Oh my me. gosh. <laughs> I'm right where up where I belong. Jenna. <laughs> oh Jenna. golly, I made it up. Just, oh, sorry guys. I'm sorry. I'm, it, it was a key anyway, so you're good. You're covered. Yeah, it was you know, a I Jenna totally did it song and before every show I'd say no singing. <laughs> the problem is I always trying to change the word and make it fun and then all of a sudden I stopped was I was realizing I was doing it and I was going stop in my mind because I knew Jenna was going to say Jenna no singing <laughs> so I tried to right, everybody a little Sorry later about that. so back to the guys because we could just blah 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 um, <laughs> well, we do uh, so I know you have other stories to tell us about I want to hear about them well, um, we actually got contacted. Please, please. <laughs> we got contacted by a family down in southeast Kansas, who said basically the entire town sees the big, the big feet, the big Sasquatch, whatever they called them. They had like nicknames and different <laughs> names for all of them, but they saw Sasquatch um, year round and have for decades. They say. So we were excited. We we're like, okay, well, let's go. So we drove down there, and as soon as we drove into town or like right outside of town, you could see the snow. So we were like, ah, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be doing this all in the snow, aren't we? You know. So we got there. We listened to their stories. Um, it really shocked me on the detail that. Um, and it wasn't just the family themselves. They had other people in town come and sit and just wanted to talk and tell the stories. Um, and we had to be honest with them. We we're like, you know, we just started doing this. We're paranormal investigators, but we've had our own experiences and dealt with it. And we love the history and the research of it. So that's why we're here. And the story that got me listening to them really well is she said that uh, her and her husband uh was gonna go for a picnic and they parked at the top of the hill and was gonna walk down toward the uh river which was probably be probably about a 20 foot gap of a river um uh, just a small little space to have a quiet time together uh she got out of the van walked down the embankment got all the way down there um that's when she, when she went through some of the grass it was kind of high loud scream happening right like right next to her she fell to the ground just terrified because the scream was deafening 
And then she looked over and she saw a Sasquatch actually on the other side of the embankment running. So in her mind, she's thinking that the it jumped the river and ran. You know, to me, that was like, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I said, what's the possibility that there's two of them? And you did, I said, did you turn around and look behind you or anything? She goes, no, I just started running um, back up toward my husband uh, and he grabbed me and we took off. And I said, I guarantee it was probably standing right next to you. And the other one just took off running. I said, yeah, there's probably two. So maybe it was trying to warn the other know. one. Hey, That's just my instinct. Humans are that. there. Create a diversion over on the other side of the bank. Yeah. And that way the other one could probably escape. We've seen that a couple of times in other cases, too. Well, I mean, that just happened. Ones. That happened with you guys with mm-hmm. the RV. Right. Because as soon as they saw the uh, the creature outside of the RV, and then when they came out, it was gone. Mm-hmm. So they start trying to chase after it. But also, Brendan said mm-hmm. he heard commotion behind the house, which made them turn around and focus the opposite direction. Right. And then he's like, in his head, he's like, Oh, man, there's two of them at least. Yep. He just made a distraction so this one could go further yep. back. And he, sure enough, he, he turned around. He said he could hear, like, some more movement through the brush. They could further, crashing further, the other branches, away. breaking and stuff like that as a thing. So I other think they away. work well as a team. I would agree. You know, just from the stories I heard from all of them out there in the city to just, like, our experiences, the brief that we've had there, you know, one-on-one. But it's crazy. I, I just heard a story the other day, and literally it was two days ago. Somebody was telling me that they had uh, seen a deer coming running. Like, you know how deer run. Mm-hmm. They Okay, but this deer was, like, running for its life. That it way faster than what they normally just gallop along. And it was like it was being chased. And it chased it across the road. And as it was crossing the road, it got hit by a semi-truck. And the person saw a Bigfoot on the other side of the road where the deer was running to. So they thought perhaps it was being chased by one and, like, herded to the other one. Um, So that brought that up in my mind when you guys were talking about there being (laughs) two working together. Mm Mm-hmm. I read something similar to that where some hunters were out in a field. Um, it was getting darker and they just kind of decided to sit back and they saw um, how they came upon this. I don't know, but how, how it came was the deer was running across and there is a Bigfoot that actually grabbed it while the another one came from behind and clobbered it from another direction like they just crisscrossed it. Wow. Breaking its neck and everything. And, and they these, saw this? They saw that. They said it was it was like they just tag teamed it and the deer had nowhere to go. So let me ask you a question on not you, but the, the ladies on the sheep squatchers. What do you guys think about their feeding habits? Are they you know, carnivorous or are they are they plant feeders? I mean, because you hear about them always going into near farms going into the cornfields grabbing the grain and stuff like that but then you also hear things of like them attacking animals possibly for we assume for food so are they like us where they kind of eat same similar things that we eat or are they certain types that eat certain things i've heard uh it's especially from native people on the reservation mm-hmm. complaining that they come in and steal the food out of their gardens mm-hmm. yeah. and asking what what should we do to make that stop and i said well you know i know of one native woman who was having that problem and so she just planted some extra and she said this much is for you take that much but please leave the rest for me and they did yeah and she she asked them in ceremony that way you know and uh maybe white people don't understand how to ask in ceremony and that's okay feel free Mm -hmm. to contact me and i can tell you how to do it but (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty simple to do, but, um, and, and it, it was amazing to me that that worked for her, you know, cause they were taking all of her watermelons and like everything. And she was so disappointed. She was like waiting for that watermelon to be ready. And then it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
But, you know, one of the other things, I, I do think that they eat similar foods that we eat because of the stories of trading, that mm -hmm. the natives would trade the food with them. Um, I think they eat fish. I'm, I'm pretty sure they eat deer because there's been enough reports of people seeing them going after deer. Right. Um, I, you know what was interesting when we were in Indiana, I saw in a very hot spot, I saw chicken in the woods mushrooms and I thought, why are they there? They should be eating that. I didn't know that you have to cook those in order to eat them. Otherwise, oh, wow. they cause severe stomach upset. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why aren't they eating this? There were so many of those mushrooms there. Um, so I, they obviously know what they can and they cannot eat. Right? Yeah, definitely. I think cattails. Cattails oh, are yeah. good. Yeah. Have you eaten cattails? Because I no, have. no, I no. Have. But I, I was watching Survivor Man today, and he was actually <laughs> eating those. So, well, you, you know, I'm part Native American, so I've gone to like the Wild Food Summit put on by one of the reservations, where we camped out for five days and we harvested the wild foods and we ate that, and um, that was fun. But cattails were amazingly delicious. Hmm. And I every time I'm driving, because in Minnesota they're everywhere, hmm. and I drive by and I'm like. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> that brings up an interesting point. Um, I don't know if you remember on the last show again. I, I keep referring back to our most infamous Bigfoot sighting with the Tahlequah incident in Oklahoma. Um, the camera that we had facing towards the back of the house where the, the wires got cut, the only thing in frame the, as far as outside the house itself was a cattail that was moving. And that's where it was cut. So... I never thought about it in terms of that. Maybe it was a Bigfoot that was interacting with our stuff and was going for that cattail, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I still need to send those videos and stuff to you guys so you can see. And yeah. It's just I have no explanation for any of that. Like I said, it's one thing if a human did it, and I just understand why they didn't take the expensive piece of equipment facing the house. If you're going to go through all that trouble, why not take everything? Mm -hmm. Nothing was taken. Nothing was harmed other than a wire was cut. So. You know, can I answer your question about um, what we think mm -hmm. about what Bigfoot eat? And, sure. and the reason I'm bringing this up is when we were in, I believe it was, was it Kentucky that we were over with um, uh, Squatch Man? Squatch Man, that was Indiana. Mm. Indiana. Okay, yes. So when we were over in Indiana, we had, he had brought us out and he, we had happened to walk by a riverbed. Jen saw a handprint huge handprint she said oh my gosh is that a handprint and we're all just like oh my gosh well we realize this handprint is over here and I run over to it and the first thing I want to do is what is it so I put my <laughs> eyes right up to it you know you really have to take a look close so you can see it and then it was like wait a minute something in me just said smell it like oh, no yeah. yeah and I smelled it and it was like Ooh, it smelled like grubs. It smelled like snails <laughs> and here there was in fish there was dried up riverbeds there so they've got to be picking Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this was actually sand on this log where the where uh, the hand was. If you would have bammed on that log, that sand would have come off. Wow. I mean, it was incredible. It was. And did you take a picture of it? Oh, yes. Okay, you good. You did it right. Picture. You did it yes. right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot once to again, tell the best part. <laughs> once again, and people just we, are astonished, you know. We yes. were out with Squatch Man, and he had this thing about not, he didn't, he wasn't big into equipment or whatever, whatever. So, I mean, we didn't bring anything except my cell phone. Okay. Yeah, I didn't bring mine because and he a flashlight. Said... Yeah. So, um. You have proof. You got to have yeah. proof. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fun to tell stories. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's fun to tell the stories, and you hope that the viewers you're talking to, or the individual you're talking to, is really believing what you're saying. Because, I mean, if you talk to us, we're going to tell you the same story over, and it's not rehearsed. We're going to tell you the same story, same details every time, because that's what we saw. That's what we experienced. And, you know, the thing is, we, we, we have a lot of our stuff documented on some on video camera, a lot of it's on audio recording, and things of that nature. So, and more than one eyewitness you know seeing this versus just my own eyes seeing it we have at least three to maybe five people seeing this at any given time so it's good to have that do you ever put your oh sorry go 
I was going to ask about your families. How do they feel about you looking into the paranormal and into Bigfoot? I mean, do they have a feeling one way or the other about one versus the other? Or how accepting are they? Because some of my family's like, yeah, go go do what you want, Jen. Good for you. And others are like, oh, gosh, we're not even going to pay attention to that. Look what Jen's doing now. <laughs> um, you know, I've been pretty fortunate and pretty blessed. Uh, I know like my mom and well, my dad, especially just cause he's an old, he's now almost 70. But at the time when we started doing this, we've been doing this for over 10, you know, between 10 to 15 years of different things from paranormal to big footing hunting and whatnot. Um, he was always a skeptic, which I understand, you know, he's the big strong male of the family, the household. And he's, he's also the oldest brother of nine kids, you know, so he, he's, firm in his convictions you know or his beliefs but some of the stuff when we go back and i start telling my mom and them stories i can see him kind of catching a you know listening you know lending an ear a little bit and seeing you know i mean once again when i'm telling the story i'm telling it like i'm telling you, you you guys you know i'm just telling you having a conversation and i'm not you know over exaggerating or i'm not like you know it's just it is what it is so i've been pretty blessed other than my you know my dad but i think he over the years he's he's warmed up to it and welcomed it but Aside from that, I mean, the biggest thing with the paranormal, I was always told, was don't bring it back to the house. <laughs> I'm always warned about don't bring it home. And then when things start happening when I'm not here, they're like, you brought something home. I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> Probably. Sorry. <laughs> it happens. But the thing is, it's always been here. You just didn't see it until now. <laughs> what do you think, Jason? What about you and your oh, support system? My family absolutely loves it. Um everybody mm -hmm. uh even the naysayers who don't believe right. in the paranormal or anything like that um i've been a tour guide for going in my 12th year uh for the wichita ghost tours and just i love telling stories and i don't know i i start telling my story of actual cases and everything and next thing i know they're just hooked on it and then i'm sharing audio sharing photographs and doing everything and they love it and then it just changes like their whole perspective of how they see everything and i'm like and if you don't trust me or you don't believe me come along with me yes. i will take you yeah we love inviting people to come with us whether you know well i mean we do it for cases that are more the public can be there versus the private ones we can't because some of those ones we go into, we don't know what we're getting into quite yet, other than the claims. And you have to be very, very careful because if we come in with the, you know, a whole barrage of people with this, they're not going to take us as serious as, you know, hunters. So we try to, we try to limit because also we don't want the contamination, number one, because we've been in Friday night. We had a case where the owner said he wouldn't be there and it was a business and he had his coworker there. Well, he ended up showing up and he had been out having a little bit too much fun. So he was very way too much, fun. too much, too much, too much green beer. Let's, let's put it that way. So, <laughs> so it was a little bit disruptive. And even, even his wife who came along this time for the first time is like, you know, she kept telling him to be quiet. And then finally she made him leave because it was just too much. And it's like, ah. so we try to limit what we do, but it's good. We, we have a good support system. I mean, that's why we're still going strong all these years because yeah, I mean, we couldn't have done it without those people, you know, supporting us and getting behind us. And I mean, it's it's been a good it's been a good career for this. I can say that. I mean, we're Definitely. truly blessed. I mean, look, we're sitting here now with, exactly. you, with the three of you, you know. So exactly we're having fun. So <laughs> and yes, it's, the it's same an... is to you. We, I mean, this is this is what it's all about. Let's get together, share, learn, knowledge. Knowledge is power. Just have right. to say it again, you know. I just can't wait till we get all of you into a location, all of us together, and we can either whether it be sasquatch whether it be a little bit of paranormal you never know so yes. it, uh, let's go have some fun once you know this thing calms down the world calms down a little bit hopefully maybe this year or sometime so it'll be fun and if we could if we could uh get into that area that you were talking about in Telequa, that area again or yes. or something nearby that where the activity is definitely we're coming down it'll be mind-blowing i'm telling you <laughs> i mean even, so, the, even the cemetery alone i mean was mind-blowing for us yeah i i've never seen so much activity inside one one place and just walking into the cemetery and how the ground itself just changed and became like a sponge every yeah, step you took very very out soft there. i've never i've been in tons of cemeteries and you know for investigating or just you know going to a funeral yeah 
it, nothing felt like this. Well, we know Oklahoma is all mostly red dirt clay, you know, and yeah. this area is like walking on pillows in the cemetery. Wow. We can't explain it, and we always have some kind of interaction with something you had the there. freaky snow that was just around the one tree and right. called your name out. And, and then we had the, we talked yeah. about last time, the different color orbs floating around the different or, light, ener- energy were lights. Orbs or were they fairies now? Well, yeah. You've got my mind thinking about that now. All I know is there's multiple ones that were different colors and different, like you talked about the red ones last time being, you know, <laughs> angry and watch out for those. But, you know, we've seen those. We've seen the green ones. We've seen I orange. saw a yellow one that actually mm-hmm. looked like it had wings and it flew by. Yeah. And it's on I, camera. I couldn't. I couldn't it's on it camera. It makes sense now. Yeah. I agree. Yep. And wasn't it amazing just to have that experience and be like, oh, was that a fairy? <laughs> yeah. Now At the I time, think, I wasn't yeah, thinking it was, I was that. Just but like, what, what yeah. was that? <laughs> now it, it makes me, like Jason said, I'm more curious as to yeah. what we caught. So it's like opening a door now to yep. like something. You can't different. close it. You can't mm-hmm. unknow it. Yep. <laughs> Plus, it was one of the claims of the family. So, I mean, we saw yeah. with our own eyes. So, it's true. It's good to have I, that. Uh, I've had a, a similar uh, situation happen to me where my eyes were opened and I had no possible clue that this would ever really exist. Mm-hmm. And I was with Jen. And I don't even know if I, I'm embarrassed to say it, you guys, even today. Okay, so Jen and I were sitting there. We were looking through our monoculars. And I'm sitting here looking at this piece of I'm seeing nothing except for weeds. All of a sudden, I'm seeing what looked like a little um, gnome. And I thought, oh, that's so weird. And all of a sudden, it went, but it went toward, so this is how it looked to me. And I said, that's so weird. It looks like a little gnome. And then it goes, and I was like, oh, oh, I almost gosh. dropped the camera, <laughs> almost dropped the yep. camera. I thought, I'm crazy. I'm not, wow. this can't be happening. It scared nice. the crap out of me. It's things that you, Okay, if it didn't move, I would have just chalked that up to something sure. else. You know what I mean? But it moved. There's more things wow. out in this world than any of us know, and I can't wait to find out. I agree. I, I'm right there with you. Yep. Always looking for a good adventure. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. Researching the unknown. So, yep. That's what keeps us going all these years still. Mm-hmm. So we just have, like, less than a couple minutes left of the show, guys. Um all right, I want to I want to give you guys time to plug your to plug what's going on for you guys, and I know you have an exciting show coming up soon. I know one of our yeah, favorites. What's happening this weekend? <laughs> this Sunday, March twenty first, <laughs> you can join us live on Cryptic Heartland, which is Facebook dot com slash Cryptic Heartland, or you can go to YouTube slash Cryptic Heartland, or you can go to Twitch TV slash Cryptic Heartland. All three of them, and you can watch us and our other teammates. We get to interview again the fabulous world known she squatchers again. They're coming back again. So yay! So we get to we get to turn the tables and ask them questions about their stories. So don't forget this is a Sunday from seven to nine Central Standard Time on Facebook, YouTube Live, and also Twitch TV. So and we posted a link to our pages and I know we shared it with the she squatchers and tagged them in it. So you can follow find the links on their pages also as well. So. Yes. Don't miss out. It'll be fun again. <laughs> and 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 you guys definitely will have the insight to whatever you want to know. <laughs> then we can ask you guys. Oh, I want to do that. That's kind of in the program. So we can we can say which one of you is going to do the naked challenge at the next Paracon. So, <laughs> so no. yeah, we're going to oh, yeah. do it. <laughs> you might get in trouble for that. We yeah. will. <laughs> All right, Just, guys. Well. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. And I'm sure we'll have you on another time in the future. But thank you so much. We've got the guys from Bigfoot in Kansas and also from Cryptic Heartland. So check them out, everybody. And thanks for tuning in. Good night, everyone. And now it's time to dance. Bye. Bye, guys. Nice seeing you. There's no music. Are we supposed to be dancing to no music? (laughs) And they're not dancing. (laughs) That's because there's no music. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>